Hey, everybody. It is Friday, and welcome to Total Health Live. It is, what is it? It's 1 o'clock Pacific, 4 o'clock on the East Coast. I'm Dr. Christopher Vogelman, one of your co-hosts, and with, with me, as always, is a lovely, talented, noted nutritionist, the one whom I call the nutritionist of the stars, Monica Klein. And you are a star, Christopher. What should I I'm say? I'm a star. I just I did everything when I was a little kid for gold stars. You did. Well, good for you. I don't know any kid that didn't I knew try. That I, was, I was so motivated for a gold star. At one time, the teacher ran out of gold stars and gave us silver stars, and I was so incredibly disappointed. I think that was probably second grade. Sad. You know, when I was, um, well, I, I know we had a competition once, and there was, you know, gold, silver, and bronze, right? Of course. Yeah. Um, and that was a big, big competition in our school. And of course, everyone wanted gold, but I was happy with my bronze, whatever it was. I think it was track and field, track and field. Somebody made a bronze of you? Um, no. I was oh, just thinking, did they or didn't I? No, um, yeah, in that's in, that's in that's another true. life, I was doing this um, uh, TV show called At the Gallery and then Focus on Art. Oh, really? And I won an award for a, a documentary, and it oh. was about a, a, a bronze sculptor oh. who did an historical piece. And I basically did the historical documentary, and it was it mm -hmm. was about this bronze mm -hmm. rend not rendering, but this bronze piece. It was really quite amazing. But I was very happy doing that. I actually was so authentic. I got, I got um, the sound of trains by following a train. <laughs> that sounds, that sounds very familiar. In the, in the rain, following a train in the rain. There's a train some, in the rain, not in Spain. In the though. There was no train in the rain in Spain. On the yeah. Plane. So it was, um, uh, I don't know, that was a little segue, but uh, bronze, bronze. Is bronze baby. I had too. no idea that the word bronze would trigger something like that. <laughs> You it's have like, no idea where it will go. It's it's like word, word association. Word asso yeah, word association <laughs> time here at Total Health Live. So speaking of associating, we often associate the current uh, situation in the world as well as the United States with the old COVID-19 and pandemic stuff. I'm just going to scoot over. You had mentioned before we went live, at least in written form. Let me go over to the thing. You're talking about vaccines and variants. Oh, my. And the benefits of having an antibody test. Yes, the benefit. Did I mention that in my notes? Okay, it I says guess right that's here. <laughs> Numero uno. Um, yes. Okay. So antibody test. I think it's a good idea. I'm I'm going to have one, and yeah. um, because you never know if you have had it. Now, of course, you're going to decide what to do with that information, those results, and um, but I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea to know that before you have the vaccine, and I I know most people have had. Well, fifty percent of the population has had the vaccine already, so. Um, I'm a little bit more um, cautious, uh, but it's also a matter of, of um, having time if, if I do have an adverse reaction to be able to have time that time on yep. me. When you have an at-home <laughs> hospital you and you're on call 24-7. Exactly, exactly. And I think, it's, I think there are uh, situations where it's, well, some people, you know, they, they should not be taking it. I have a friend whose doctor has has advised her not to take it because of a such a, you know, a, a a specific type of autoimmune condition she has, mm -hmm. and certainly those who have thrombocytopenia in their history, their medical history, should uh, also, you know, research uh, in depth and and consult with their physician for sure. Indeed. So indeed. Just, Indeed, <laughs> and <laughs> indeed, and in research, as you act. Um, let me see. I wanted. To, sorry, I'm I'm losing my place here today. Um, you had mentioned the whole notion of where the COVID the Wuhan lab is. leak. Yeah, you know, and 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 it may be true, it may be not. There's actually three competing theories right now, and it turns out that in some of the old Fauci emails, you found that they were considering that actually seriously but not releasing too much to the public, I guess, just to prevent people from going nuts. And, and it may have had to do also with the fear that there would be retribution against uh, Asian people of Asian. Well, that, that did happen anyway, right? Yeah, but that was, you it know, happened anyway. nevertheless. I mean, yeah. Previous, um, I mean, we, we don't know who else is involved and, and if we don't know, I mean, uh, it's definitely, but it was, it was definitely disregarded right away. Um, and, and yes, I could understand for public uh, health and, and uh, safety, 
that could be a reason. But well, it was um, also it was it, also because it, it had been. I, you know, I, I looked at this in detail, and there, like Senator Tom Cotton, for example, was a major proponent of it. And the problem with it was that you have to consider the source. So so. When he was talking about it, he was also combining it with a whole bunch of political conspiracies and, you know, the election stolen and everything else. And I think he lost his credibility in terms of investigating it. But the, the, the CDC indeed was investigating it. It's just At what point China was so he? closed. Because, what? I mean, this was right from the get-go. It, it, oh. it certainly didn't make sense to me, oh. uh, it, you know, that it wouldn't be a lab, a potential lab leak or even... Uh, you know, the possibility of that being, I mean, there's always things discredited when it should be a conversation like it could be this, it could be that, it could be well, a lot of things yeah, rather than no, it's this and that's but it's, it. But it's, my, it's my, sort of the, it, yeah. it is it is totally speculative at this time, no matter what you're looking at, whether you're looking at a, a zoonotic vector or but you're it wasn't looking speculative. In the, it hasn't been speculative for the most part the whole time it it's been this is what happened and um there was no room for any kind of uh other other um you know uh hypotheses shall we say but um or anyway, fa or fantasies is everything's evolving everything is evolving and hopefully more and more uh information and well, clarity will come to so, us so i think I think with respect to the origin of the virus, it's like, I, I'm very pragmatic when it comes to this thing with my, uh, you, we've had a number of family members actually die from COVID-19 infections. And so so I, I take it very personally and to a great extent that it's it's kind of like the person who, who you know, the, the, the house is on fire and you don't throw water on the fire because you wanna find out what the cause was. And so, so for me, it's like, put the fire out first and then we'll talk causes because you can then uh, potentially nip things in the bud with future pandemics, which by the way, I truly believe there will be future pandemics just because the world is so incredibly integrated with, uh, with all these different nations. And so, right. And, um, you know, I think, I think it goes part and parcel to investigate where it came from. So the, uh, diagnostics and the treatments and, and whatever else is required can be, uh, interwoven mm -hmm. into a strategy. Yeah. So, yeah. um, but anyway, yeah, so Just it unfolds every day. Yeah, there's something new. In fact, I was I was having a conversation with a couple of hospital workers today, and what they were telling me is like, you know, they even said too, you know, we just don't know about certain things. I talked to one gentleman who said, no, um, he was saying, he says, look, and I said to him, I said, I think we probably won't know a lot for another two, three years, maybe five years. He said, yeah, you, we've been saying that all along. You and yeah. I have been saying that all along. But he he, verif he verified this for me. Yeah, and I'm I'm actually on my way to the hospital after we're after yeah. our call, so I'll have some firsthand data too. But they were. Yeah. They were very, uh, it was interesting though, of course he, uh, my husband just went in and they did mm -hmm. a lot of testing, COVID testing. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but one of the, they didn't even know he had the vaccine, which I think is part, should be part of the intake right away. It, it, should, it should be, be part, part of the of medical intake. record. I would, I would hope that yeah. if it's a local hospital. I mean, part of, uh, yeah, part of the, it should be, well, especially if it's a, an ongoing patient, but it should be part of the intake. Mm -hmm. uh, the very least, I mean, even perhaps, perhaps that's something to uh, bring in into the fold at some point. Even oh, that's the yeah, that's that's the whole EMR. Allegedly, electronic medical records are going to make things easier. The problem is there are multiple systems of e EMRs, and they don't always talk nice to each other. Yeah, I mean, I know that's been complex. That's a complex uh, thing, mm -hmm. and it's it's doesn't work <laughs> very small well, it, it, it works as long a lot as, of, it, it works if you're in the small system that happens yeah to i mean i get way. i get i get i get complaints from uh physicians all the time like i didn't get that data oh it's not available so i i think this is this is a very critical um concern for the operating of uh hospitals and other institutions and certainly you know, medical offices uh, as well. So you got, you got all the privacy regulations from HIPAA. Yeah, you've got and, and, everything. And so, but you, but anybody who's involved in software has to be very careful with those too. And that's one of the reasons they point to for this different systems not communicating well yes, with absolutely. each other. Absolutely. Yeah, so. 
Yeah. Anyway. So, so just know that this happens. It's complex and um, try as we might, <laughs> try as everyone might, it's still uh, not a perfect system. Right. So different people have had different reactions to the J and J, the Pfizer, the Moderna. I mean, reactions generally have been mild, but you've pointed out some things about skin lesions, some uh, accentuation of Parkinson's and uh, shingles, the herpes zoster. Well, this is sort of a long-term kind of yeah. uh, potential with some mm -hmm. of these, um, some of the vaccines. Um, I don't know, um, but um, definitely I have seen people with shingles, like people I know, uh, as a reaction um, right after getting the vaccine. So again, what I'm trying to bring to light is that there there are things that need to be um, not hidden and not discredited. Um, certainly, you know, for people who are actually experiencing these things, so they they know, well, maybe this is a reaction to this versus what's wrong with me, what's going on with me? And, and they could get misdiagnosed and treated, uh, not treated properly and accordingly. So uh, I think there's just so much room for, um, uh, misdiagnosis and error, and as always in any kind of medical uh, environment and situation. But um, well, the worst place—the place, worst place to go if you're sick and trying to heal—is actually the hospital. Well, yeah, I mean, so. this is, we try everything not to get my, you know, to exactly be safe at home. Everything, and I certainly tried um, before mm -hmm. you went into the hospital. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, the best place is at home. But if you have you know, something going on. And certainly if you have a critically ill uh, family member, um, mm -hmm. don't uh, leave it too late. You know, yep. call, call 911. 911. It's not for fun. Make sure not it's for that nosebleed specifically, but certainly if you've got clotting, um, yep. you know, What's that is, yeah. I mean, if it continues, certainly a nosebleed can be something quite serious too. So you want to mm -hmm. just pay attention. Yeah. Hey, so yeah. do we do we want to jump into Q and A's? Because I know this is a shorter. Yeah, uh, we can we can answer a couple of questions and then right. we'll answer some more next week. Yeah, next I week we'll be it. in full fledged summer. Oh, that's true. Because the summer solstice. It's interesting because in yeah. Europe, in Europe, and I know remember this from Russia and Germany, other places, they look at upon June first as the beginning of summer, where we tend to go to the twenty first or twentieth this year. Uh, for the summer solstice. So there seems yeah, to be meteorological versus astronomical summer. So. Well, we look at seasons too. I mean, you know, yeah. my mother's birthday, if it's June 1st, she's a summer, summer baby, <laughs> hundred year old summer baby. <laughs> a bouncing she has baby, it June 1st, June a 1st bouncing birthday. baby centenarian. <laughs> a baby centenarian, a little baby centenarian. No, she's lovely. I just, Miss her so much, I can hardly wait to visit her. You'll and be there, uh, be there soon. Apparently, the Canadian restrictions on American travel are due to expire July twenty first. So. There you go. There yeah. you go. I will be traveling and visiting and hugging and doing all of that. Smooching. <laughs> <laughs> and so let, let's go to Q and A uh, from from the land of. They say Nevada. We used to say Nevada. Nevada. But, but I they think say, they, the residents Nevada, say Nevada. Tomato. They tomato, say Nevada. Tomato. If you don't say Nevada, you ain't from here. So anyway, but I ain't from there. So Lisa from Las Vegas asks, she says, you know, now that summer's here, I'm finding it really tough to control my eating habits. I'm so used to having beer and hot dogs and hamburgers during the summer months. So how can I refocus and focus on salads and other healthy vegetable meals? Good you know, question. You don't, you don't put relish on those hot dogs? <laughs> or ketchup or mustard or ketchup is a vegetable according to nancy reagan back yeah in yeah it's a, it's the most popular vegetable but um <laughs> i mean if you must have those things speaking of which add some onions add some True. tomatoes add some lettuce make it a sort of a salad with your burger or whatever um you know you could forego the bun um and just have the burger or um yeah, I mean, you're going to have those things. And, um, you know, I grew up having those kinds of things, barbecues and things like that. I really haven't had a lot of that. But every once in a while, I will crave uh, a hamburger or a hot dog. So I'll make it at home. And um, 
And it's really, I found myself, it wasn't really the hamburger, it was the onion, the grilled onions that I love. I love the I grilled crave. onions. I mean, oh my goodness. Even when I make salads, it's like the next day I want that salad because of that, that such great flavor of those red onions. Or I will onions. give you my onions in exchange for the ground uh, round. So the, the what? I, I, the ground round. The, the ground the, round. Because because in exchange for the ground you walk on, I thought you were going that way. No 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 no. <laughs> like so, so, I, I have round as opposed to. <laughs> no, I understand. I understand. Um, but, but it sounded like you were trailing uh, into that uh, neighborhood or neck of the whatever. Well, yeah, the um, so I, I'm just not a like big onions. onions fan. You're not I a big onions. onions oh my goodness, I love onions and they're so good for you. No so onion, no healthy. onion, scallion, none of those onions. Scallion, garlic. I do, however, like my wife's Mexican pickled red onions, and they are easy to digest. I think the issue has been just a digestion thing. Well, so. cooked cooked onions are better uh, than raw yeah. onions. Raw onions are a little more difficult. Um, so cooking onions, better, much better. But I do um, like onion rings, but they're usually battered, battered and fried fatty and fried that's the issue yeah. Yeah. so cooked uh onions uh, you know probably better for most people but when we're talking about salads actually you could do some grilled uh onions and put those in your salad as well and um so red onions tend to be a little bit stronger so you might want to try some if you have this uh issue like christopher does um so Salads, yes, it is the time for salads, but you don't, uh, I mean, there are so many ways you can make salads and and so many things you can throw into salads. A lot of people just think it's, you know, my lettuce and- It's definitely not iceberg lettuce. That's my least favorite. Iceberg, le <laughs> iceberg lettuce with some with, oil with, with, and not even all And some oil. old tomatoes. Oh, that's a <laughs> yeah, so make those salads alive and and you can put anything in there you can put basil you can put um uh i was gonna say ba uh, basil and um cilantro and cilantro <laughs> and parsley even that's a different flavor from cilantro Par even though they're could, both yeah you could put parsley, parsley parsley sage rosemary and thyme and thyme, thyme, yes. and rosemary i think it's rosemary is a little too strong for salads but yeah. i mean you could you could i i just had some fresh Rosemary delivered twice this week from one from my neighbor and one from um, someone that works here. And it's um, it's just so fragrant, really great. Over my shoulder and down a floor is a large amount of rosemary in the backyard. <laughs> yeah, we have so much growing here as well in our yards. Um, so dill, I love dill. The, 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 the aroma of dill just makes me feel like when I was growing up in my mother's garden in our backyard, it was just, it reminds me of summer. Dill summer, dill summer, watermelon summer. And that's another thing. You can do a watermelon salad with feta cheese and a little bit of balsamic and a little bit of olive oil. That's so refreshing. Or you can, um, do, you can do my favorite, which is a steak salad. Just a few steak. strips of meaty protein. Yeah. Hey, so, I got rid of the bun that way. You know, a lot of people don't want to have um, heavy, you know, meat and heavy things to digest in the summer. So you want to start eating lighter, of course. So along with those um, herbs that we just described, there's, you know, fresh tomatoes, there's uh, red cabbage, there's uh, radishes, um, so good for your blood, uh, different kinds of lettuces. Try and stay away from the iceberg uh, if you can. Uh, arugula, different, again, different kinds of lettuce. Um, and um, I'm just trying to think of what else. I'm Celery. Just, Carrots. I'm not a big arugula fan. I do like the organic half and half where they would have like a spring mix mixed in with baby spinach. That seems to me. Yeah, really that's cool. always good. Spinach. Uh, again, you want to you wanna not, like there was such a trend of having raw spinach, raw mm. spinach salads, raw spinach smoothies, and, and uh, too much sp raw spinach can actually affect your thyroid function. So you don't want to have that all the time cooking your spinach i mean it can be very light i have a lot of baby spinach in my 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 meals my grain meals and my um all my meals you can just put it into your meals uh, as you're preparing them and um you know i have this i i've, t I've shared about a, a delivery service that i have every once in a while i receive the food and it's very there's a lot of vegetables in it. Plus they will have, you know, ground chicken, ground turkey, um, various things, sometimes pulled pork or pulled chicken in there. Not a lot, but just a little. 
and um, lots of baby spinach. And I will add vegetables to that. Onions, for example, or carrots or cauliflower or whatever I have uh, I've prepared. Zucchini. You can just throw anything. My mouth is salivating because I just get so excited with fresh, fresh food, you know, fresh vegetables. Like, like fresh marshmallows? No, I don't think marshmallows. marshmallows are ever fresh. In fact, you know, I saw in my cupboard a bag of marshmallow, the marshmallows that I've had for at From least 1995. six years. No. For six years. And I ha I got them because in case my husband's blood sugar ever goes too low. So I have juices and like candy or the marshmallows, but I, I've never opened the bag. So would you like them? Would you like me to ship them to you? Ship them, ship them. I mean, actually it's probably easier for me just to walk to the store and get the marshmallows. Yes, I, I think, think it would be. Well, this is, the reason I say this is because it comes to mind all these smorgasbords we used to go to back in uh, Western New York and, and near Buffalo, and and they would have the salad bar, but the salad bar was mm -hmm. was replete with potato salad ambrosia, which was basically marshmallows and mandarin oranges and coconut mixed in together, and, and, and was, grated carrots. I was always surprised at you know people who would say, "Oh well, I took, had the salad bar," and you'd look at the plate and there was barely any green on it. You know, it's interesting talking about my history. Um, when I, when I, I, I was after I graduated from university, I was I was working uh, as an assistant manager for a large chain of restaurants, and um, and then I spent six months in the kitchen, and my responsibility was the salad bar, and um, so it was sort of like more of a scientific food, you know, food uh, management kind of focus for me, but it became pretty, pretty uh, mundane. And I didn't enjoy it very much. And and the things that were on the salad bar, I mean, mm -hmm. and, and not only just the things, but the mounds of food that people would keep on oh, like salad, it must be good. It's salad, I'm just going to pile up on it. It's the same psychology that says, you know, if it's at Whole Foods, it must be good for me. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think, I don't know if we talked about this recently, but you know, I think it was the Cheesecake Factory, they would show oh, yeah. the caloric content and their salads were even higher than, I mean, a thousand plus The, the dressings, yeah, the dressings. The dressings, the and yeah. Uh, yeah. So just don't, just because it's a salad doesn't mean it's healthy. Just because it's whole foods, it doesn't mean it's healthy. Correcto, the same yeah. thing in Trader Joe's and others. Even though we love these places, it's just that you can make bad choices in these places. <laughs> well, there's a lot of packaged foods. Um, yeah you know, and so you want to focus on healthy, fresh and, and grown. I would love to create a little bit of a, an herb garden in my, in my yard here, but um, that's uh, a project that is still on the, on the, on the list. You know, I, I hate to say this, but we, I don't know that we're going to have time for our other questions today because we're almost we have time 20... for one more question. I, we might, it's going to be a brief one here from Marnie. Marnie's from Oxnard, California. Marnie, Oxnard. Yeah, I think like there are a, a lot of uh, sea mammals in Oxnard. They're definitely down uh, south uh, where you are. So Marnie, Marnie, Marnie from friend. Oxnard, just hey, down the road. Marnie from Oxnard. There are, are there any oxen in Oxnard? That's what I want to know. There anyway, so Marnie, are. Marnie says I'm used to eating a lot of rice and beans because of my Hispanic heritage. How can I start eating less starchy meals? Well, uh, start having those salads we've been talking about, and I'm sure y you could answer this question too. Go to mamamaggieskitchen.com <laughs> and you'll find a whole list of recipes <laughs> that are there. They, they, the interesting thing about rice and beans, everybody seems to think that this is my Hispanic heritage, is rice and beans, but there are so many meals, like uh, meals that are non starchy. And I think that that people have got the idea that all Mexican food involves tortillas, and it doesn't really. They, you, there's some of my favorite dishes from Baja have are very low in terms of starches, and you may not even get rice and beans. Like, give example. an example. Here's an example: uh, pescado veracruzana. So it is basically it's a fish, fish. dish. 
in a very light sauce. It has olives. I mean, that's the biggest part of the dish is the olives that have the highest mm -hmm. amount of carbs. But there's good fats in there, and it's it, it's it's very light. It's easy well, to digest. Olives have good fats in and of themselves. Yeah, in and of yeah. itself. And then, so so sometimes with the southern Mexican cuisine is far less starchy than what you'll see in the north of Baja. I mean, there's a big difference between northern Mexican cuisine, like in Durango and in Chihuahua and those places, as opposed to going further south. As you get further south, things are much lighter and by and large, it's less hotter. starchy. It's, a it's very hot. Yeah. Very hot. So when you get into places like Veracruz and Tobasco and all those places, they have lots of fresh fruits. I mean, you, you walk outside your house and there's a mango tree. You just pick a Every mango. time I've gone to Mexico, I've had so much great yeah. fresh food. It's been, and, 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 and there's a lot of people who travel that are afraid of that. Yeah, um, but it's but it's the it's the best. I mean, I remember once in Costa Rica many many years ago uh, with a, with a friend of mine, and uh, and she actually wound up having a mango from the side of the road and without washing it, and that was a big mistake. So yeah. that was it wasn't Montezuma's yeah. revenge. I don't know. It was San Jose's was revenge. San Jose revenge. It was Costa Rican revenge. Costa Rican revenge. Yeah. Yeah. So so so, so, so Marty, I would I would encourage you to uh, you could even pose a question to the lovely Maggie Unzueta because she and follow her on Instagram because she does answer her direct messages, mm -hmm. and she's giving health information all the time. I mean health relative to good nutrition and options for people who are trying to lose weight. So. Yeah, so there's a lot of options. You don't have to have the starch all the time. And, and mm -hmm. it is a myth uh, that that uh, you can't have healthy uh, Mexican food. You can't. Yeah. I, mean, I, I remember albondigas soup. Oh yeah, the, 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 yeah. That there's a re, there's a recipe for those meat for that meatball albondigas. Yeah, and it's really super tasty. I mean, a lot of the soups are a lot of flavor are, are vegetable soups. By the way, mm -hmm. now there's some that have hominy in them, like. Uh, um, like a pozole, but there's a vegetarian pozole. It doesn't have to be pork or chicken or things like that. Traditionally, it's pork. But yeah, I'm, I've developed a lot of knowledge of Mexican cuisine over the last seven years. I remember so, I had someone yeah. uh, working here, and he was making his version of, of uh, um, guacamole. So yeah. it was it was avocado, onions, your favorite onions, uh, tomatoes. I can take a, I can take a little bit of it, but yeah, the the guacamole is is uh, easily digested for yours truly, despite the small amount of onion that's in it. So, so this recipe was gua uh, avocado, onions, um, tomatoes, lime, feta, I cheese, hope. feta cheese, and it, sour cream. It has it to was have lime very on. very rich. I don't make my uh, guacamole like that, but it was very rich. But it was delicious. I hmm. tell you, it was delicious. Interesting. Very rich, though. Very rich. Not right. for everybody. So yeah. speaking of I rich, mean, you don't want to you don't want to go off the starch and then go heavy into the fat. So you want to have a little balance, especially light lighter cuisine in here in the summer when it's hot. Someone once told me that balance was a piece of cake in each hand. That's a balanced diet. So with that, it is almost lunchtime, or maybe it's past your lunchtime and you're heading for dinner, or it could be any time. So I hope we've kind of given you some ideas about healthy eating in the summer. And we'll continue this. We'll continue this conversation because it's fun. It's fun to start eating different foods, seasonal things in the season. And uh, it's summertime here in in the northern hemisphere anyway <laughs> exactly they're having winter in australia yeah it's summertime time and the, root vegetables down down on the yeah and the eating is easy okay we're back next friday same bad time same bad channel keep submitting your questions because we will uh look forward to answering them so ciao for now ciao for now have a great